Hello everyone, and welcome to the Christmas edition of Masterpiece of Crap Theater. I am your host, Les Thespian. The music that you are hearing in the background is from the Star Wars Christmas album. Yes, there really is such a thing. But far more infuriating than a Christmas Star Wars album is the Star Wars Holiday Special. Yes, this is a bootleg videotape, of course. I don't believe it actually exists on real home video. Anyway, I shall explain the story of this horrifying tale. In 1978, CBS agreed to air a Star Wars holiday special. It aired on November 17th of 1978, and it only aired once because George Lucas has gone out of his way to make certain that nobody sees it again. So to clarify, he was personally ashamed of the Star Wars Holiday Special, and yet had absolutely no problems whatsoever with Howard the Duck, Jar Jar Binks, and Anakin Skywalker being a whiny emo. I don't know what more I can say about that. Other than that, I would say... Roll it! The special begins proper with Han Solo and Chewbacca flying in the Millennium Falcon, and trying to get Chewbacca home to his family for something called Life Day, but they're being pursued by an Imperial Star Destroyer. Incidentally, this is the footage of the, the footage of the Star Destroyer and the TIE Fighters are actually nothing more than stock footage from the first movie. However, Solo does cut them, make the jump to the can, make the jump to light speed. And that's when the credits really queue up. The Star Wars Holiday Special. Starring Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. Yes, what's up with that department store dummy haircut? Oh, I'm in this? I didn't realize. Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia. That's fine, just don't sing. With Anthony Daniels as C-3PO. Yes, yes. Oh well, might as well skip through the credits and get to the good and to the good parts. And so our special begins with a beautiful matte painting of what looks like a Wookiee house in the trees. And we get your typical Wookiee day, but not just any typical Wookiee day as it might seem. This is Life Day, which I suppose is the Wookiee equivalent of Thanksgiving or Christmas, it's not specific. And why, who is this cute little hunk of pubic hair? Yes, that is Chewbacca's son, Lumpy. And if you doubt the existence of such a character, check this out. Yes, Chewbacca's son, Lumpy, even existed in the comic books. So there is some continuity to this. At least for a little while, all we're going to get is the hairball equivalent of Norman Rockwell. Yes, mother is insistent that son clean up in the kitchen. Grandfather, of course, demands the very same thing out of him, I suppose. It's hard to tell what they're saying because there are no subtitles. I wonder if there was even a script for this. I don't know. Why did I ever have children? So, little Wookie, incidentally his name is Lumpy, has to take out the garbage. Oh, it's such a long way down. I think I know how to handle all my problems. Not that they'd ever miss me. I don't want to live! It's a good thing that this little Wookiee has good depth perception. Meanwhile, back inside the Wookiee hut, we still can't understand what mother and grandfather are saying. Moving on. Did you know that originally in Return of the Jedi, it was supposed to be a planet, the planet of Wookiees, helping out the rebels? But since the Wookiees already had technology, that's why they went with the Ewoks. Apparently, we are treated to some sort of circus act, I guess. Eh, 
this, isn't it cute? I mean, it's so... Whoa! Who is doing the 69 salt? Who was doing the 69er salt there? I have no idea what's going on right now. This is like watching one of the Star Wars prequels. I think I'm beginning to understand why George Lucas is personally ashamed of the holiday special. If my company were producing this trek, I think I'd be pretty embarrassed too. But little Lumpy's had his fun, and now it's time to help out in the kitchen. I guess you do have to pity this little Ewok. He never gets to have any fun. Bless his little furry heart. Meanwhile, Mala checks the uh, checks the TV monitor to see if there is any if there's been any contact from Chewbacca. There has not been any. Hmm. Huh. I can't seem to get the picture to look just right on my Atari game. Chewbacca's family then attempts to contact Luke and R2-D2, who are fixing an engine on an X-Wing fighter, I think. And where's the rest of my hair? Mark Hamill just made Corvette Summer at this time, in which he had longer hair than in Star Wars, so... What gives? You're not allowed to talk to Luke. Only grown-ups are allowed to talk to Luke. Not now, R2. Yes. You are supposed to be watching that. Why am I watching this? What's up? Why, that just perms my hair. Anyway, Archie is trying to alert Luke that the engine is smoking. Things not looking good there. But Luke can't be distracted by that. What is Life Day anyway? It's just taking a little bit longer to get there, that's all. He'll make it. Come on, don't look so worried. Now Chewie's not going to want to come home to a house full of long faces, is he? Come on, Mama, let's see a little smile. Yes, let's see a little smile from the female Wookiee. <laughs> that's better. All right, a Wookiee right. smiling should be illegal. Back to this engine. I think we might have it solved. Yes, we just might. Or not. Hey, use the force to fix it. Now oh, forget it. No, I'm off duty. I've come to look around your This, of course, is Art Carney playing the traitor. Yes, he trades and deals in usually the most worthless space junk imaginable. And here we have an off duty Imperial Guardsman doing. just looking around the shop. That's about all, really. He tries to sell the Imperial Guardsman a pocket-sized aquarium, but he hates fish. And the tank is a snack between. I hate fish. That's not a as a matter of fact. Oh my. I feel like talking like C-3PO because, oh my, this is most unbearable. And I don't think it gets any better from there. 
continue. Why does this Imperial Patrolman remind me of Baldar from Santa Claus Conquers the Martians? He even has a mustache like Valdar. Seriously. I'm not even kidding. Just look at the resemblance there. Mala calls Sundad, that's the traitor's name, using codes. Right. Using a speaking in code to let her know that Chewie and Han are coming home soon. Oh, yes. Enjoy the one real scene with Darth Vader. That's all you're getting. Time for more important matters here. A cooking show starring... That's either a cross from Rosie from the Jetsons, or it's the evil stepmother from Cinderella. Oh, Harvey Carmen, why did you agree to this? Was the Carol Burnett show just cancelled and he had nothing better to do? Yes. Apparently, a Wookiee believes slicing is chopping. And now it's time for the actual cooking. So it's stir, 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 and eventually whip, stir, 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 whip, stir, 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 whip, stir, stir. Dear Lord. Oh yes, apparently Harvey Corman grew another arm just so they could beat along with the whipping and the stirring and the hipping and the hopping and the whipping and the bopping. Of course, a fourth hand would come along to block the sneezing. Makes perfect sense. And back to more of Han Solo and Chewbacca. And more stock footage from the first film. Yes, it seems that the Imperial TIE Fighters are now following Han and Chewie. Right, Unfortunately, Solo didn't make the right coordinates. So now they've come out of hyperspace through an Imperial patrol. Whoopsie doodle. Fortunately, there's a problem with the main gun. It seems that Captain Solo will have to operate it manually. All right, enjoy more of Harrison Ford while you can. He doesn't show up much in this. Gazook? I thought the planet was called Kashyyyk. I thought, oh, never mind what I thought. The point is, the, uh, the Emperor has, put in, has imposed a curfew on the entire system, and no one is in it, and they pretty much quarantined it. No one is allowed to come or go, whatever. The Wookiees were afraid that there might be an Imperial trooper at the door, but it's just the traitor, Sundad. I think I said his name didn't right. Sundad, Sundance, whatever. But, fortunately, everyone's happy to see him. Although they're still worried about Chewbacca. Clearly understandable. <sighs> that was a lady? I guess Wookiees kiss all of a sudden. <sighs> I have a feeling it doesn't get any better from here, in fact it actually gets worse.